What is up, Rad Potential YouTube? Welcome to another Rad Formational videos where we're going to learn about building a mock up engine or putting together an engine such that you can figure out how you want to mount a rotary engine in your car. Okay? So, first bits first. All right, here we have the assorted pieces that I'm going to put together for a mock up engine. Now, what is a mock up engine? Why would you need it? Why would you use it? All right, well, a mock up engine is something that has, in my mind, has no guts, super light. It's what you can stick into a car to figure out engine mounts, figure out general plumbing procedures, stuff like that, right? Figure out where your transmission mount goes, locate the engine, the whole deal. So in my case, I don't have some fancy styrofoam engine block. So what I'm going to do is bolt together a set of irons and housings with a front cover on it and an oil pan that has nothing inside. So no e-shaft, rotors, balance, oil pumps, no nothing. It's just the shell of an engine. We'll take that engine, stick it on a transmission, and then now you can locate that engine inside whatever vehicle you are wanting to put it in. So, for example, this one, my buddy Keith is wanting to put together a rotary rat rod. Okay, so it's based off like a 50s truck. Um, it's got a whole bunch of other stuff on it, this, that, and the other. It's going to be, you know, reasonably decent power. Should be all right as long as it doesn't put huge tires on it. And it's probably going to be a little heavy, but I think we can gear it, maybe throw some boost at it make it work. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and go through what I have laying out here for this to work. Now, my brain says that a 50s Ford probably is going to have a pretty big front K member, I would think, maybe. I don't know, but he's building the route so he can cut it out. So on a rotary, the oil pans vary in depth and shape and all that stuff. Um... This one's custom, as you can see. So you'll have to make sure that you pick a proper oil pan. And then also, what engine you have is going to determine that as well. If you're going to use, we'll start with the weird ones, okay? I guess they're all kind of weird. It's a rotary thing. If you're going to use an FD engine, which is a REW, the engine mounts are on the rear iron, okay? So the engine mounts are back here. They stick off the rear iron about this far. The oil pan is flat and just kind of has a bulge, in the bottom of it. I have one sitting out back. I'll put a picture of it in right now. So that oil pan, you can see it's clearance issues with something like an RX, like a first an RX-7 where the drag link has to run across there. Now, this oil pan was built for a 13 being a first gen. And I'm pretty sure it's sat like that in that car. Actually, no, it would have went like this in the car and been rear sump. Comment below if you know why. I just flipped that around. Anyways, the 12A stuff, the sump, and the early stuff, the sump's all front and back. So just remember that. The reason I flipped this one around, though, if you commented below or, or thought about it, you notice these two holes right here. So on an FC engine, RX-7s that came out from 86 to 91, those engines mounted off the center iron, okay? So right here would have been an engine mount that came down and held on the driver's side. And then on the passenger side, you'll see that big bolt hole right in the middle of your screen and the two bolt holes at the bottom of the iron. There would have been an aluminum engine mount that hung off the side of the motor and went down to the passenger side. So those that aluminum engine mount, the bolts for it, go through the oil pan. You can see right here two of these bolts, and then they just covered up the third one. Um, the backstory: this is when I bought my yellow car, the rally car, way back when. It had a turbo two block mocked up in it with this sketchy oil pan. So rear iron, FD engine, center iron, FC engine. Now you're like, well, what are we going to talk about the front iron? We're actually not. We're going to talk about the front cover. Okay, so on an old school... The front cover is where the engine mount is, right here. This four bolts on the front of it. There's an engine bar that goes across here. You can see a 84RX7 engine. This is a GSLSE 13B. And this is where the engine mount is, right here. Okay? So, same deal. Little guy here. Little guy here. And on your FC and FD engines, the FD engine mounts are pretty much symmetrical as far as how far they stick off the engine. On an FC, the passenger engine mount sticks off farther than the driver engine mount, so it's off center like this. Now, the next bit you're going to ask, well, we talked about 13Bs. What about 12As? Okay, so a 12A 
is 20 centimeters overall shorter than a 13B. All right. I have seen 12As built using FC irons before. So you can do all the machine work and make magic happen and do all the stuff to, to build that if you want. FC engines, FD engines, the coolant grooves are in the wrong spot. So you have to do some custom housing machining to make it work. All right, the coolant grooves, which are these grooves right here, where the coolant seals ride. So those grooves are in the housings, or those grooves are in the irons on an FC and an FD engine. So from 86 to 2002, RX-7. And then in the early 12A, early 13B, all that stuff, the uh, irons are smooth. And then... Just none of these are that. The irons are smooth, and the housings have the grooves in them. So if you look at this iron, you see it's smooth, and this housing you can see has the grooves in it. This is a 12A housing right here. So that's why you can't mix and match the 12A stuff with the, with the FD and the R, R, FC stuff very easily. But if you can do the machine work, you probably already know how you're going to mount your engine. So. The front cover stuff is generally the only way to mount a 12A in an old school 13B. You can put a 12A front cover, we'll just say that, or a GSLSC front cover, old school front cover, on an FC engine. You can put one on an FD engine, and then that will mount into your car. Now, that being said, the FD has a little bit of a different oil pan shape at the front where it mounts to the bottom of the front cover. So right here. So just be aware that if you are switching the front cover to an old school one, make sure that the oil pan matches up and fits. It could be a direct match, but I don't recall that it exactly is. So now let's move on to the mock-up block. What all will you need? So currently right here, I have a pretty actually symmetrical engine being put together somewhat, kind of, sort of, without even realizing it. So this is an FC six-port front iron that the coolant groove has cracked, I believe. Oh no, this one hasn't. This one's good. The other one was cracked, the center, or maybe the other rear that I had. Anyways, okay, so this is an FC six port front iron. The ear for the water pump is broken off, but that's no big deal. Perfect for mock-up. We have a housing here with grooves in the housing, so this is either a GSLSC or an old school 13B housing. This right here is an FC, that's the one that's broke, is an FC Series 4, Series 4 has a hole in the top of it, um, center iron, and this has the coolant grooves cracked. So you see right here, this little spot, the camera picks it up, um, the groove itself will break off of the housing, or the housing, break off of the iron, and then you'll leak coolant into the combustion chamber, and it's a not, not good situation. The next piece we have here is a smooth housing, so um, probably, I don't remember, but I think this is S4 or S5 because of that. I don't know. Somebody comment below what that is. I'd have to check with the ones I have stuff written down on. And then this is a cracked S5 turbo rear plate um, from the white JDM Savannah FC turbo that we built. Um Crack that dowel right here, so this one will just be the rear. I had another six port rear, but it was super dirty, so I'm just gonna use this one. So, what are we gonna do? We gotta stack this. Well, we're gonna stack it right here on the table because we don't have an E shaft, so we don't have to have a hole in something. So, you take the front iron, pass this baby down, set that over there, come over to the shelf here, and I should have one of these will have dowels in it okay i was gonna find some dowels but i couldn't right away so i figured we'll show you this um oil pans it's super easy to remake a dips a, uh, a pickup tube you can find other ones from other cars that work um i need to find a set of 13b tension rods here so that is a 13b tension rod right there so we'll need that and we'll need a couple more that match that length. 12A tension rods are shorter by a decent amount, as you can see right there. So we'll grab a couple 13B tension rods. Oh, fun fact, look at that. Now, who knows what the M on the tension rod means? The Mazda M. 
comment below. I'll reveal the answer at the end of the video. Oh, that's a dowel. How thick is it? That is a 13B dowel. So see how it's much wider than that housing? A 12A dowel will be much narrower than that housing because that's a 13B housing. Dang. Okay, well, while I dig through this because this is really heavy and probably going to fall off, let's figure this out. Ooh. Got two dowels, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, twelve, a whole bunch in this box. Okay, so actually let's go over to the workbench because it's brighter. Y'all can see better. We're just going to shove everything off the workbench and make a big old mess. Boom, ready to stack. Okay, so there we go, front iron. Next thing you're going to do... Grab the housing you want to put on there. This one is filthy dirty. You're going to lay this baby on here, just like that, with force. Use the force. Okay, then we're going to take a dowel. That's not going to go without some help, because this is really dirty. All right, PB blaster. Put some on the dowel, probably. Put some in this dowel hole, too. I grab a rag and just wipe these off because, well, oh yeah, maybe, nope, that's most of the way through there, enough to catch, so you get that dial put in there, Flip, falls right in. We line up the back half of this unit. We'll wipe this other dowel off. Ideally, this thing slides right in. Oh, look at that. Slid right in. How about that? All right, you get a mount. Make sure that one's all the way in. Bam. Dowels are in. All right, center and iron. We're going to put some grass in there for good measure. Center and iron goes on. If you've ever built a rotary, this is like the hardest part of putting an actual rotary engine together with the E-shaft. you got to like fandangle hold it and do the whole deal to get it on there. Bam, bam. Sealed up. Make sure the corners didn't pop out. Tap it down. Grab the next housing. Slap that baby on there. Make sure it's good and sealed. Put these dowels in. Oh, nailed it. First try. First try. Done. Take this one. We'll slide this one down in there. Boom. Diggity. All right. Rear plate. Before you put your rear plate on, make sure that your corners haven't popped off of your rotor. Make sure your coolant seals are still in there. And make sure your E-shaft is in in the right direction. Take this down. Put them on there. Bang, boom. Oh, missed that side. Bam. Done, did. Easy peasy. All right, now take four tension rods. Don't even look. Just throw them in there. Order doesn't matter. And for those of you who were talking about the uh, one with the Mazda M, it goes right here. See where that one goes? That's the Mazda M one. It's longer than all the rest. Fun fact, it is a little bit longer. These are a 17 millimeter. I'm just putting four of them in here. Obviously, this is a mock-up engine. Doesn't entirely matter. So the the proper torque spec for these is 30 foot pounds. I think it's actually 28, but uh, 30 is easier to remember. Okay, so from here, I am probably going to. Dang, this is actually heavy. Wasn't really ready for, ready for how heavy this is, so oh, that's not that bad. Okay, so from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send this engine to Keith without the oil pan on it, and then he can mock that one up. Let me know if it actually fits. If it doesn't, this is the ultimate conglomeration of engines. Not really. It's a S5 or S4 NA, S4 NA, S5 turbo. This looks like a. Was that one smooth or not? Old school, oh yeah, exhaust port's tiny. Old school 13B, this is a NA, 
FC port. So, that's all you need to know to put together a mock-up engine. Super. E well, I guess here. Let's put the front cover on it. You know, because we can, right? So we'll put you guys down right here. Ready for this front cover to go on. Let me find some bolts. Front cover. There's dowels on this. Um, always make sure that your oil pump O-ring is done properly. Stick that baby on. Um, this one ought to be yep, the right length for that. This one ought to be the right length for that. needs a couple washers. Hey yo. Okay. We found the actual longer one which goes in there and the shorter one which goes in here. Boom. That's looking like it's going to fall off while he's mocking up this engine. Probably to put another bolt in down there. All right, so that's going to conclude putting together a mock-up engine for a rotary, anything that you want to put it in. Um, this one's going to have, obviously, the front cover plate on it. I've got a couple different brackets um, that I'm going to provide, just one of the old, like, grab an old-school truck one or something that I've got laying back here um, because he can make a new plate to mount, just use this to mount the engine, make his own crossbar. Um, yeah, you can mount these off of a, uh, uh, what am I say, like a motor plate. Um, there's really no good way to do a front motor plate on these without this front cover. Um, but, yeah, that's going to conclude the mock-up engine. Comment below with any questions. And uh, I'm stoked I had the idea to put this thing together, get this video up on the channel. Hopefully it benefits somebody. Um, for those that follow along with just everything here, um, if you're new... Welcome, but uh, this is the rally car build. I've had to move some stuff because of the tree. We got the sinkhole, the blue car, the brown car all moved out here. The Cosmo is not in the danger zone. And uh, we're getting ready to head up north for a day or so, a couple days, ride some bikes. And uh, Justin, the other guy on the channel, he's getting married this weekend. So get stoked for that. Thank you guys very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Keep it rad. Come here. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Digging around the woods? Hey, sit. Jump. Good job.